I wanted to talk a little bit about The Simpsons Season 1, Episode 3, for reasons that will become a little more clear as we get deeper into this. As you might imagine, I'm not allowed to show much of The Simpsons in motion without getting totally obliterated online, so accompanying this commentary, if you want to call it that, are going to be some screenshots that I've taken directly from the episode. Starting first with this image of Homer in this uh, hazmat suit, very timely in a way, uh, handling what seems to be like a plutonium rod with uh, what's kind of similar to tongs, and I like the, the guy in the background handling a sandwich with the same tongs. I was always charmed by the early incarnation of the intro and these schlubby looking characters that we definitely wouldn't see again standing at a bus stop before Bart comes by on a skateboard to grab the bus stop and force them all to run in chase of the bus that goes by since the sign isn't there. She gives you a little bit of character of Bart right in that uh, little gag. So some about this shot with all the kids just assembled here as they're about to go on a field trip. I just love it. I feel like if, if when I was young we were going on a field trip, we would definitely be be forced into some sort of line or some kind of, you know, formation for a head count. I don't know I don't know if that sounds military as hell, but these kids are just out there. And uh this kid next to Bart, close to the center of the frame, man, his look, I just I just love it. Get a load of this kid. Black girl real close with blue hair. Love that. Yeah. Another wonderful shot immediately follows of Otto, the bus driver, uh, jumping the curb and narrowly avoiding uh, colliding with these kids as he slams on the brakes and you actually hear the tire scream. Ridiculous. If that wasn't enough, he also leans out of the bus window and says, Sorry, little dudes. Party hardy equals tardy. Making it abundantly clear that this man is likely hung over as he is whisking these children off to whatever their destination may be. I don't have anything to say about this other than the, the recognition of the tooth there and how much it bothers me. Yeah, this is turning into a Simpsons slideshow with commentary. And, I, you know, I'm completely all right with that. So Bart gets on the bus and is instructed to take his seat. But the only seat available is next to Wendell, whom Bart does not want to sit next to because he gets sick. Um, doesn't seem that he is established as enough of a pal with Millhouse, who really probably hasn't gotten any screen time at all yet. So there he goes. They pass a series of locations, including but not limited to a junkyard with a bunch of Springfield's tires, the tire fire having not been set yet. Uh, and they're all waving with their hands out of the windows, which is amusing because Krabappel just told them all not to stick their hands out of the window because, and she makes reference to a guy who lost his arm. Um, they pass the school again, uh, you know, making light of Otto not really being on top of things. And the twins behind Bart decide they're going to kiss him to make him sing. So he's forced to do that on the bus. It's supposed to be a real embarrassing uh, scenario, but of course Bart owns it and is just singing the hell out of whatever stupid little song is lost to time as this is 30 years old. They get to the Springfield plant, which was the destination for their field trip the entire time. And whom do they find but a black Smithers, as was his incarnation in the first season of The Simpsons. Waylon Smithers, The Simpsons' very own Michael Jackson. Smithers takes the children on a tour of the nuclear facility where Sherry and Terry, the twins, tell Bart that it is their understanding that Bart's father, Homer Simpson, is incompetent. And uh, this is wonderful because one of the twins is actually just a floating head. Their body seems to have not been uh, added here, which is just amusing to watch. Um, cue Homer's first appearance in the episode, kind of lounging and uh, enjoying himself a donut. Iconic. And not to break my own arm jacking myself off, but I hope you appreciate my screen cap game, because even I have to stop and just, mm, just take it in. Just loving it, you know? That's some good stuff. I didn't animate it, though, so I'm willing to accept uh, only a portion of the credit. 
most of it me though you know you might have missed these frames okay for more from me so homer aware of the field trip and tour uh drives in search of the party of children uh likely to appear busy or you know like he's taking care of business and noticing him from above bart calls down to him and as he is momentarily distracted he crashes and the alarms start to sound the situation is quickly contained but homer simpson is promptly fired a wonderfully bizarre looking lisa by contrast to the modern animation is at the table helping homer look through classified ads at possible potential jobs that he might be able to pursue a clearly saddened homer shoots down every suggestion made to him citing that he is unqualified and is even heard to remark quote i've never done anything worthwhile in my entire life i am a big worthless nothing end quote damn homer so marge immediately encouraging says keep talking like that fuck boy and i'll spatula you good i'm kidding just kidding what she actually says is you've caused a number of industrial accidents and you always bounce back this is just another bump in the road so homer motivated by his family's belief in him enthusiastically heads out to find a new place of work only for a montage to play out before our eyes where doors are literally slammed in his face homer inevitably finds himself at moe's tavern we get a quick bart moe phone prank just to add a bit of levity bart calls says he's looking for ip freely moe shouts it over the bar everybody laughs um moe actually says if i find you i'm gonna slice your heart in two good stuff you know don't 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 at me because i like that it's a fucking cartoon you, you son of a bitch and if you have a problem with it i'll slice your heart <laughs> all right i'm kidding i'm kidding um what i enjoy is that lisa is actually joining him in the laughing at this which i appreciate because they're both kids and there's a bit of uh sibling bonding there uh if we were to contrast that with the writing of lisa's character these days uh, she would i guess be too mature for such a juvenile fucking uh thing and uh, you know let's not even turn this into a who can stand lisa thing so early in my slideshow series that's right there's gonna be more of these maybe homer pulling out his wallet to request another drink get a little of the screenshot realizes that he's all out of money and mo telling him that he doesn't believe that he'll be able to pay him back uh, as he doesn't believe he'll be able to get another job cuts his ass off so homer leaves mo's tavern in bed marge tells homer that he's always been such a provider that you know she could uh, go back to her old job if necessary and and after homer asks if she thinks she could still do that she says yes you know it's like riding a bike and true to her offer she takes up that old job again homer now couch ridden is approached by lisa who offers him a sandwich that he doesn't eat and bart who takes advantage of him just being a zombie by having him sign a failing report card day transitions into night uh, with homer not moving on the couch before a duff beer commercial motivates his ass right into the kitchen in search of duff beer what he finds instead is a cake that reads don't worry daddy we love you anyway hmm. homer tossing the cake over his shoulder exclaims damn i need money and finds his way up to his son bart's room where he steals a piggy bank instantly upon smashing the piggy bank and finding that its contents wouldn't cover the price of a beer homer grabs a pen and a sticky note from the fridge and begins to write and i quote dear family i am an utter failure and you'd be better off without me by the time you read this i will be in my watery grave i can only leave you with the words that my father gave me stand tall have courage and never give up i only hope i can provide a better model in death than i did in life 
Love, Homer J. Simpson. Roping himself up to a giant boulder, Homer carries it to his destination. As Homer passes an elderly couple on their porch, the older woman matter-of-factly says to the man, Ooh, looks like Homer Simpson's about to kill himself. To which the man responds, Oh, he could just be taking his boulder for a walk before they both begin to laugh. Could be seen as a little dark or edgy, especially for the time, but honestly, who better to be so comfortable with the idea of a life slipping away than an older couple? And I consider it wildly accurate to the indifference of a world that honestly has no reason to react to something that has so little to do with them. Homer, reaching the bridge he intends to make his final leap from, finds an identical boulder and remarks, Ugh, oh, you live and you learn. The rest of the Simpsons, having discovered Homer's note, rush out to find him before he jumps, and as they are in the street, a car approaches. But, in the nick of time, Homer, even pulling the weight of the giant boulder attached to him, manages to run and get his entire family out of the way before the car can turn this scene even more grisly. Homer remarks at how dangerous this intersection is without a stop sign, and after being dressed down by his family and reminded that they love him and wonder how he could possibly think of taking his own life, a motivated Homer says it's the last thing on his mind now that he is filled with purpose and a desire to make this street safer. Mm -hmm. After making a case for the city council, they approve of the addition of this sign, and Homer, motivated even further, goes as far as adding speed bumps to other places and signs. This comedic one with a sign ahead, uh, almost obscuring the speed limit sign after it. Uh, even more amusing, the transition from the actual scene to the picture that is taken for the paper seems to switch the type of sign. Ridiculous, you know what I mean? Just good stuff. Marge and family articulate how proud they are of his accomplishments, but Homer, unsatisfied, gestures towards the power plant, saying there's a danger far greater. The family, impressed, shows even Bart to remark how he's a hero, only to act like he didn't say anything when he's asked what he said. Homer is then seen rallying protesters outside the power plant when Mr. Burns takes notice. He sends down blacksmithers to bring Homer back to speak to him. Burns immediately offers to rehire Homer, and Homer immediately refuses. Undaunted, Burns makes clear that he wouldn't be hiring him back to his old job, but he'd be giving him a new position, a promotion, into the new role of safety inspector. Homer, after a mental debate with himself, admitting that he'd be a terrible person for the specific job, but that he can't allow Marge to be the one supporting the family, agrees to take the job. Burns hisses, excellent, and tells him to go outside as his first task is to assure the mass that the plant is safe. Homer attempts to do so, but in the face of the cheers from the crowd and his family, finds that he can not follow through. Burns asks verbatim, you mean you're willing to give up a good job and a raise for your principles? To which Homer, planting himself firmly, responds, That's the lug you're looking at. Homer says he plans to spend his every free minute crusading for safety, but also says that he'd probably have much less of those free minutes if he got the job. So Burns, reluctantly, grants him the position. Homer returns to the mass and, through tears, articulates that even though they've come to depend on him, that he can't continue to be their safety watchdog, but assures them that there's a bit of Homer Simpson in all of them, and that he's been appointed the new safety inspector at the plant. After some dancing on the ledge to the cheers of the people below, Homer falls, but is caught by the crowd below and carried down the street as the credits play for this episode. What I honestly love about this specific part is that uh, the, the, the crowd magically teleports. Uh, at one point, they're clearly on the other side of like a gate, 
and even a security checkpoint at the entrance. But when Homer falls, they are right below him. And uh, that's some cartoon stuff for you. I really do enjoy this now 30-year-old episode of this show. And um, I feel it provides a wonderful contrast to what it has become. But that is only expected as what can remain the same for 30 years. If you made it this far and you're into whatever this was, like the video. Let me know what you'd like to see more of or if there's a specific episode you'd like covered. Take it easy.